This is a treadmill. I know it doesn't look like much of a treadmill anymore, so maybe better put these are all the electrical components of a treadmill, fully functional, removed from a treadmill's frame for this video for show and tell. You see, the owner threw away the treadmill because he said it wasn't working anymore. And he was right about that. Yesterday. Today, the treadmill is fully functional when I plug it in. Turns on and beeps and I'll show you full functionality on the motors and how all of the components work together. This repair needed no new parts. It needed no parts of any kind. And there are no bush fixes here with creative wiring up and whatever. It needed minimal time and minimal effort on my part. It was caused by a single piece of loose wire. This one. That has a quick connector at the end of it, looking like this. And this slipped off from one of the terminals of this switch. They normally go together like so. And when it's loose, just it's still this is the switch and this is the wire, so so they are not staying together. Normally they should like this. So in this video I'll show you how this condition comes about, fixing it from here on because it's still unfixed. I just bypassed the switch. So fixing it will be very easy. Just needs a little flattening there of the um, soft metal components on the terminal end so that the wire so that the uh, quick connector can be friction fitted to one of these terminals so in this video I'll show you how this came about and we'll also show you where to connect the loose wire exactly because you're not gonna have it once that once it's loose there are three possible spots to connect on the switch and and among other things we'll explain how the safety lanyard and the switch this is a safety switch or kill switch or cut off switch how the lanyard and the switch and this wire interact together to bring about this situation over time so if your machine looks completely different with a fancy screen on it and big speakers and multimedia connectivity that's fine as long as you have a lanyard with as long as you have a lanyard you will have a kill switch in the system that as the name suggests cuts power from everything else so nothing will work like the owner reported and if your switch like this is fitted with these quick connectors instead of soldered in so if you have quick connectors like this the same condition might happen to you now i realize there are design variations so your kill switch might look like this with a long lever on it instead of just a push button and also like i said your uh, control panel whatever can look completely different but if you have a safety lanyard with a, some kind of a plug end on it that plug in somewhere on your control panel then this same condition might come about and happen on your machine and uh, treadmills cost thousands of dollars the cost of this repair was zero dollars and took five minutes so besides that I will show you what else is wrong with this machine the cord is frayed with actual wires sticking out from it in yet another video I will show you how to find a proper factory original replacement cord that's electrically compatible and is not some grade or not of uh, lesser capacity than the one that you have. There are two fuses on the machine that might need attention if the machine gets flooded in a basement or you spill a drink on it. Well actually one of them is a fuse, the other one is a thermal resettable uh, breaker. There is a speed sensor that's worn. I'll show you how easily all of these can be removed and added back onto the circuit. And of course, you don't need to remove anything from the machine. These can all be serviced while everything is mounted in the frame. Lastly, I'll show you the motor just briefly. How the owner complained that the 
bearing was getting noisier and noisier over time and the TV had to be louder and louder so I'll show you not the motor overhaul that's a separate video but I'll show you how easily this can be detached from the circuit for overhaul and, and it can be staying in place bolted to the frame while this is done so this video is somewhat of a shell of all of these videos and the switch replacement I forgot to mention if your switch dies your kill switch or the safety cutoff switch then of course like I said nothing is going to be powered and these switches are two dollars and eighty nine cents so under five dollars extension cord seven five dollars whatever fuses also under five dollars bearings or bushings for the motor under ten dollars it needs two bolts to be removed to get to the bearing or bushing so anyhow uh, all of these fuses speed sensor motor uh, cord switch are gonna be discussed in depth in separate videos the links of which I will include in this videos description box below let's get going with the uh, with this loose wire situation the reason that prompted making this video is that if you try to get any kind of support from the manufacturer or the retailer of the machine usually you get nothing usually there isn't much support especially in terms of electrical troubleshooting or diagnostics or mechanical one or repair options and there isn't a lot and the reason for it is one uh, loose wire doesn't make enough money for uh, or, you know fixing this kind of condition doesn't generate enough money for the retailer that's one another one is legal liability they don't want the homeowners to start tinkering with a machine that uh, they don't know anything about and number three the manufacturer or the retailer may not have the in-house expertise in terms of electrical components and electrical troubleshooting to offer anything whatsoever. I'll show you the nameplates, that's where we start. All of these electrical components have different nameplates. The switches are made by Omron or some other manufacturer. The cord by made by somebody else again. The fuses aren't made by either the retailer nor the manufacturer. So the motors have completely different manufacturers and are sold as a finished product as is. And of course the manufacturer or somebody oversees the integration of all of these components so the right fuse the right gauge of wire the whatever connect to the right circuit board that's fine but once that work is subcontracted out and done the by a third party then the manufacturer will still have no clue about how to troubleshoot any of this so that's how just manufacturing works in general and I wanted to point it out so that's what we're gonna look at that's the relation between all of these different nameplates one more thing before we get started is legal liability same as the manufacturers concern in this video I'm gonna show this is a show and tell I'm gonna show you what I do I'm gonna explain why I do it I'm gonna show you how I do it and uh, I'm gonna report back to you how it works for me this video is not a tutorial this is not advice this is not replacing a four-year apprenticeship as an electrician or appliance technician or anything this video is a show and tell okay I hope that makes sense so this is not a lesson this is not a lecture or I'm not suggesting what you should or shouldn't do what you do is up to you you know your pacemaker you know your eyesight you know your diabetes and you know your fine motor skills and limits what you do is up to you I'm not saying that you should do any of this I'm saying this is what I do and this is how it works for me okay so let's get started with the nameplates very quickly just to explain this situation this is the nameplate that was on the frame of the machine that I peeled it off and this is what you see on it the retailer is Sears Canada it doesn't matter if they are bankrupt or whatever just pointing out the fact that the retailer is completely different in this case from the manufacturer the manufacturer is Heb Industries 
in Texas, the USA. Then this was made in year 2000. That's why the plastics look old and brittle and whatever. So different retailer, different manufacturer, and the manufacturer might only do the metal fabrication to mount this console at around hip height. Uh, there's an upright post there. There are safety grab rails. Uh, there's a frame on which everything mounts. So the manufacturer might only be able to do the metal fabrication and everything else is coming from somewhere else and the electrical design is done by somebody else again. Let me take you off the tripod and I'll show you some of these things. You see the switch here says notably Omron on it here in this upper left hand corner. Let me just get you a nice sharp picture on it there. So in terms of its replacement, a factory original replacement can be made out of a catalog where Omron switches are listed there. There are different designs, you get the idea. Same for the cord, just everything coming out of an electrical uh, parts supplier. Same for the motor, here is the nameplate on the motor. It's a very nice variable speed DC motor. So completely different manufacturer from what you see on the switch. And of course the cord has yet another manufacturer. I'll show you one in this catalog, why not? Now this is rocket science here. You can get all kinds of cords. Here is one. That's the manufacturer there, SPC. There you can get all kinds of cords with all kinds of ends or terminations. So and this cord needs replacement. The cord I'll just show you. Everything is fitted together with these quick connectors that that came loose, which was the source of the problem. And uh, I'll show you how they work together. Everything just slides together. None of this needs tools. So this is a thermal breaker, a resettable thermal breaker. It's very easy to unplug it from there you're done. If you spill a drink on it and this one gets damaged or the, or the machine gets flooded, just disconnect it. And it doesn't matter which way you connect it back. It's it's a switch essentially. This thermal breaker is a switch. You can see it's resettable. In terms of North American wiring standards, you can see the cord has three wires color coded to North America. So white is neutral, green is ground. You can see the ground screw here. The ground screw, of course, is on the into the frame of the machine, and this is line or live or main. Uh, this leg is plugged into the circuit board there with yet another quick connector like this. So it's very easy; just pull it up, and that's it. The, that's how all of these quick connectors work. This is a control board. There are no moving components on this one, so nothing is likely to go wrong. Whereas what caused the original problem with the switch and the loose wire, these are moving components. The lanyard is being inserted into it every time you exercise. So, the circuit board, no moving components on it. I'll just show you the nameplate. It does not really say a manufacturer on it. Okay, universal power supply. I was wrong. There are. And that may be just words or that may be the manufacturer. This might be something or that might be something. You can see even individual components on a circuit board that are soldered in. They have their own individual manufacturers. There you can see the top one. Potter and Bromfield for these three relays there. And there's also a little stamp on that circuit board. So, uh, if you disconnect anything, of course, take a picture maybe. Or that's what I do. I take a picture before I disconnect things. Some of the stuff is labeled, like it says, to fuse. And this is where this fuse thermal breaker is connected. Very straightforward. Not everything is labeled. The motor that we looked at for the nameplate has these two pieces, one ground wire of course, and these two pieces of wire that come here to this circuit board and they connect there and all it says is A2 and A1 on the circuit board. 
here is another fuse that again might go wrong and it's this simple to replace it and if this is faulty nothing will work on the machine no actually it will turn on I tried it it will turn on but the motor will not run N nothing will run but we'll beep and it will turn on so that's the other fuse so one fuse the other fuse the motor disconnects very easily the extension cord there it disconnects or this uh, sorry power cord disconnects very easily this is a wire grommet that the extension cord goes through you can see the kink in it it gets deformed a little bit so this one is just a few pennies few cents whatever this motor here is a second motor that uh, adjust the incline angle on the on the treadmill track bed so this is what's on it again from a completely different manufacturer usually because this motor is used a lot less for uh, uh, raising or lowering or tilting up the track on the treadmill uh, there's nothing much goes wrong with that motor usually so the bearings are bad on this one and born and you can hear them so manufacturer completely different from the retailer and all of the electrical components have their own manufacturers and then somebody else has to integrate all this into one finished product let me put you back on the tripod and we'll show you how they all work together when they do work together I'm going to plug it in And very quickly, okay, let's power it on. Let's start up that motor at the back. The that's the one that drives the track. It has a soft start like this. You can see rotation on the motor axles or axle both ends or motor shaft. Uh, the uh, it, with this big flywheel on it or pulley wheel on it. This one, this motor drives the track and this is its slowest speed for now this is quiet but if I pick up the uh, speed on it let's increase it to I don't know 1.1 you can hear it's noisier and it's even noisier when the big flywheel is on it because it's like an amplifier or a, or a drum skin on it or a sound board on it it's a big resonant surface amplifying the sound So speed variable speed DC motor speed can be increased speed can be decreased there oh I forgot to show you the nameplate on the DC circuit board I'll show you in a sec the incline works if you press it once you get a fixed number of rotations on this motor that's it so it gets very little use there this is incline level 2 now we can go to 3 and 4 there and of course when this is bolted down to the frame it's uh, it's looking more like this so you can see it's uh, the screw thread is being uh, lengthened here at this point and that's what's raising all this let's stop the motor like so softly uh, the soft start and soft stop functionality is there so it doesn't just yank the track out from underfoot and when I power it down because the track bed is still tilted up it's coming back down to horizontal there unplug the machine and we'll show you the nameplate on that circuit board there so again yet another manufacturer indicated on it and it has these stamps on it oh has also a another part number on it just in case you have the exact same make and model and you need something so that's what's on this circuit board okay let me show you how the wire the loose wire and the switch and the lanyard work together like I said it's very easy to remedy the situation put the wire back in place and force them together just very gently it is what I do so accessing this loose wire and switch this is inside the console here and the console is mounted at hip height 
to get to it you need to remove six screws for this you need a single screwdriver skill involved rotate screwdriver okay so once you do that with six screws this one flips up like so and these wires will connect will run down in the frame of the machine so the six screws are here two two and two right now the only reason why the machine works without its switch is because it's by I, I bypassed it the wires are here on these two terminals and just verifying that this is disconnected nice I really don't like working on anything powered even though there's only 15 volts AC on these terminals when it I measured it so but again that's what I do so let's put the switch back on as it was there so that's the that's the good end of this quick connector and they just connect just like so it's somewhat like Lego and I'll show you the detail on the switch but I'll show you how these just slip off like that exactly like that so both of them are loose there there these are not reliable electrical connection so it needs a little bit of a little bit of crimping with a pair of pliers very straightforward now this switch is mounted here on this piece of plastic this is where the lanyards end plugs in and I'll show you how the lanyard and this switch interact together the plug end of the lanyard here slides forward and as it does so depresses this pin plunger on the switch there that's what it does and the interlock in about this position sorry it's difficult to hold them together because this is slippery plastic there this is how they are interlocked and then when you pull it out there this is what happens the switch plunger comes forward because it's spring loaded so from now on because that lanyard is difficult I'm just gonna do it with my hand okay hope it makes sense so I'm just gonna force it together so <clears throat> I'm gonna put the switch back into its circuit and I know which switch terminals to use that's the last thing. that's the last thing I'm gonna explain and we'll show you that when the switch is in place wired connect correctly and connected correctly and I plug everything back on nothing beeps as it should because now the lanyards plug in needs to be inserted and that's gonna be replaced by my thumb here now everything works and there are numbers there so the motor could be turned on this is how it should work <clears throat> and this condition is called normally open circuit this way when I released it so that's representing that the lanyard is pulled out and the switch is plunger extends now there's no power no beep no nothing it's still plugged in so it, this is energized and <coughs> the only way the cutoff switch should work and should power everything else is only when the lanyards plug end is inserted when you pull it out it should go black, back to blank and nothing else should work like this all right unplugged and I'll show you that this switch is screwed on here with these two shiny screws so other than these six screws you need to remove four more screws two here and those two that mount the switch the switch of course has to be mounted on the underside this way so that the pin plunger will face where the plug will slide in here I hope that makes sense so if you put the switch on backwards or whatever it's not gonna be meaningful or working either and lastly one wire was connected here to the com here I'll show you these words on it com that's a common terminal here this is NO normally open and C normally closed so the circuit the only way the circuit is functional is if one wire is at the com 
and the second wire is at the NO. So this way, when these two terminals are used, the circuit is normally open like you saw it. When the plug is inserted, that's the, that's the only condition when the just to get you a sharp picture there this is the only condition when the circuit is closed and you can see that gate in part number one or position number one there is forced down to connect NO with COM because this way NC and COM are connected so don't put anything on NC in for this particular application so this circuit needs to be normally open like this cutting power from everything else should only be a closed circuit when this plug is inserted and this plug forcing the plunger on the switch or this pin plunger forcing it down this motion inside making the connection between these two terminals and that's how this machine works so thank you very much for watching it's a long video again I'm not saying that you should attempt any of this I'm just telling you this is how it works this is what's involved and this is how long it takes to remedy a simple situation like this again your design might be different your switch might be different uh, instead of cl uh, quick connectors you might have crimped on terminals or um, soldered on terminals sorry not crimped on soldered on terminals and uh, the conditions uh, that cause this one to come loose in normal operation over time may not apply to your particular make and model but again this is how I deal with this kind of situation and it needed no new parts thank you very much for watching my show and tell